if you can simply align to this state, to this energy, and let go of any need for it to appear a certain way, to not engage with the house and the winds, at least not with a sense of personal doership, then there might be a sequence of appearances to seemingly take you through the illusion of linear time to end up at your destination. Well, one of the, one of the things that comes up with time is that we make things into a process. And that, that means that we're focused on getting somewhere instead of being focused on the wish fulfilled. Now it's about, okay, here are the 12 steps that have to happen before the wish can be fulfilled which means we're no longer at the wish fulfilled. We're somewhere in this process. Right. Great. <laughs> well, if that's a limitation, I would like that limitation to be gone. If, if what is the limitation? The necessity of process before wish fulfilled turns into present reality. There is no process required, but there might be a sequence of appearances. Okay. If you're not indulging in the sequence of appearances, then you could say there is no process. So if you are to stand firm, or simply be convinced, naturally speaking, by firm, I don't mean with a lot of effort, I mean with conviction. In the knowingness that what it is that fulfills you is true for you and it's accomplished and it will somehow be. In fact, in reality, it already is. If you can simply align to this state, to this energy, and let go of any need for it to appear a certain way, to not engage with the house and the winds, at least not with a sense of personal doership, then there might be a sequence of appearances to seemingly take you through the illusion of linear time to end up at your destination. But if you don't indulge these processes with a sense of doubt and losing your footing in the end state, then there is no process for you. It's just like watching a movie with no attachment. And if anything, it's fun. If anything, it's like fireworks. If anything, it's like, oh, wonder what this will lead in. Oh, I know how the movie is going to end. I just forgot how I edited the sequence of events. And I'm going <laughs> to surprise myself to see how this intelligent law of attraction universal generator decided to generate the story so that it makes sense to everyone around me and maybe myself to some extent as well. I'm just going to, but I know the end. I know how the movie ends. So let me just watch this unfold. And so you can sit there in a sense or be there or even interact with it, but with a sense of delight and freedom and confidence and certainty. Then you can say quite fairly that you are not processing. Mm -hmm. The process kicks in when doubt in the end result is allowed. So, well, that makes me think about this notion of conviction and doubt. Because I've noticed that sometimes I just kind of end up waking up in conviction. That is, I, I wanted to be convicted a long time ago, but then one day I just was. But that doesn't explain, doesn't explain doubt. It's like, I don't want to be in doubt, but there it is. You know, so... I I don't seem to understand how to get from doubt to conviction. I often get to conviction, but I don't know how it happened. Okay. It can happen in many different ways. So it's case by case basis. Um, are you, do you have a specific question or are you requesting a, a tool of some sort? Well, I mean, I can speak to something that's going on for me right now. I mean, I've got a very clear idea of what Shambhala looks like from my perspective and I, and it it really feels right and it feels certain but I have some physical limitations that are standing in the way right now I had a stroke a couple of years ago and I'm still recovering from that and I'm going to have to recover further before this this vision of Shambhala I have could possibly be 
I'm, I'm physically I'm incapable of it in this moment. So it seems like there's still a process in between here and there, even though I've got, I really am convicted about it. I, I, it's clear to me. I know it's going to happen. It's, it's absolutely certain. But time keeps getting in the way. Like, why is it taking this long? You know, that, that, that's the thing that keeps bothering me. So does that answer your question? It uh, gives me a question, yes. Okay. <laughs> so a small portion of what you said sounds really good vibrationally. And the majority of it sounds like you're coming from a point of view within the near time. But certain things like I know for sure, I know with certainty that, that that's what it is, that that's what it's going to be and so forth. That's what feels good because you're speaking from that conviction. But then your attention or your focus dwindles into the conditions that you place upon it. I know it's challenging to enjoy the fruits of what you're feeling or what you're desiring, in this case, let's say Shambhala, to enjoy the fruits of that with an almost complete neglect for whatever it is within the current frame of linear time. But that is the trick, to learn to enjoy the vision and the certainty of what is and let go all attachments, sorry, what is in terms of the desired reality that you know is, that's why I call it what is, because that's what truly is. When you know that that is what is, then that's all you need to know. Then you are in the other what is. And then the temptation to look at the limitations and to assume that these are conditions that need to be changed before that can be, is simply the condition limiting thinker coming into play and altering your vibrations and giving you the sensation of doubt. And then you're in Yeah, e even as I was saying it, it, it felt wrong. <laughs> no, but, you, but you had to say it to clarify your question and what you're sometimes dealing with, so it was great. Mm -hmm. But yes, as an example, that contains some of the vibrations that are not conducive to not having or not needing a process but actually being in the state of the wish fulfilled. Right. But it's like this, it's a subtle art of actually just like a child when it's enjoying its imagination, it's not trying to tether it to physical reality. It's almost like it allows it to be two completely separate realities and that's fine. It's enjoying its imagination and then dinner's ready and mom shouts up, hey, dinner's ready. And it just runs down and there's no connection, it just pops out of one reality and into the other and back into this and back into it. But what we try to do is when we imagine our wish fulfilled and mom calls it and says, hey, dinner is ready or hey, you had a stroke two years ago. Look, here's the evidence of that. It's still here. We somehow tie that to our wish fulfilled and it doesn't need to be. It'd be far greater if we just allow them to be two separate realities where we enjoy the state of the wish fulfilled like a child innocently, spontaneously imagines some random scene that gives it joy and not at all try to condition it with physical elements. Let the state of Shambhala be the state of Shambhala. Let it exist for you. Let that be clear. It does exist, but appreciate it as already existent in its own domain. And then when your physical focus is more present, and you got some logistics to take care of, and your body is maybe a little sluggish that day, then let that be that. And have don't try to place your desire into this reality. Yeah. Don't try to tie these two together. Just allow this one to be what it is in its own perspective, in its own respective reality, and kind of give all attachment back to God. Like be... In this reality, be as non-attached as you can be. And in the state of Shambhala, well, you don't need attachment because you're in the wish fulfilled. You're in certainty. But so letting go of attachment, especially how, when, what, because those all create this imaginary tie between that and this reality. And there is no tie because it's literally an alternate universe. 
So if you love yeah, well, them to I, separately, yeah, go ahead. Well, that, that makes me think about this notion of shifting timelines. Because it seems like even that concept is a little flawed and the timeline implies times, you know? <laughs> and and they're all, they are all mutually existing without interaction. Mm. Wow. Okay. I think I got the point. Thank you. <laughs> nice. So then one more emphasis on what I just shared for everyone here also is see how much it takes the pressure of if you don't expect this reality to shift into that reality. What if you just allow them to be parallel realities? And in time, you can add a third, and you can add a fourth, and you can add a fifth, and truly experience yourself as a multidimensional, timeless, or at least nonlinear consciousness. And you can traverse between those different frequencies and tap from one into the other, and not necessarily fixate on the one that is most physical right now as if that's the most real just because your physical senses are there it doesn't uh -huh. mean that you allow them all to coexist this takes the pressure off it doesn't condition your desired fulfilled state by the limitations you perceive in the physical one and that freedom that freed upness that non-attachment allows for the shifting between parallel existent streams or sequences of appearances to occur much more, you could say rapidly, to use the illusion of time. Yeah. But if you put yeah, the pressure it. on this one, try, hey, okay, I, I believe in Shambhala, but here's what this one looks like. You are now drawing a condition between those two that doesn't structurally, mechanically exist. And shifting right. between parallel versions of reality involves no causality. So yeah. literally, it does not matter what your current condition is in this one. If you allow them to be independent realities and just enjoy more and more of the frequency of the one that you prefer, not making anything bad that appears in this one, then that's shifting. Then you're in the receptive mode, essentially, and the shifting can occur. Yeah. I've been accidentally doing that somewhat, <laughs> but I could, I could definitely be more conscious of it. Sweet. All right, thank you. Thank you.